Welcome to the AFCAST Tenerife Afternoons. I'm your host, Tim Dowd. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Tim Dowd for the AFCAST Tenerife Afternoons podcast with Living with MS in Tenerife. And uh, the sun's just going down. We've had a wonderful meal of uh, Thai chicken. It was really nice. It was a ready, steady cook with just vegetables and some chicken drumsticks. And uh, on today's podcast, we've got the aftcast weather, we have the COVID update, and we have an interview with Andrew Knight, the Knight Strider from San Estecaia, on how he got to the island and what he's doing right now. And also, he's the sidekick of the MacMaster, and we've mentioned him a couple of times as well. And he called me today, the MacMaster, and uh, we're probably going to do something on Tuesday when we know more about the air corridors that we're hoping to get from the Canaries to the UK. So stick around for that. And uh, as I said, I'm outside. It's a little bit windy, so I apologize for that. I've got all the details of the COVID here ready to go. And so without further delay, welcome to the AFCAST. Here's the weather aftcast for week ending Sunday the 26th of July 2020. Well, the weather's been really weird. It's been very misty. We haven't seen Lagomera for a while, even though it got brighter and and the Kalima sort of went away, he's still hanging around the mist. And uh, we saw the top of Lagomera yesterday for the first time in weeks, but we, again, we can't see it again today, unfortunately. And uh, But the weather has been quite warm, so we've been in the upper 20s, lower 30s in the shade, and uh, over 30 in the sun every day. Um, you really do need 50 factor. In fact, I've been getting some little blisters on my arms because that's the arm that's near the window when I'm driving <laughs> and Christina because she's on the other side or she sits uh, opposite me and the sun's coming from the other side. She's getting little blisters on her arms as well. So you've got to be really careful. So we're putting 50 factor on straight after the shower in the morning and uh, that's a good idea for you guys as well. Um, as I say, in the night it didn't drop below 23, um, typically around about 24, 25 in the night. Uh, that's a mid, usually about midnight, 2 o'clock in the morning, I check that. And uh, I don't know what it's like in the early morning because there's a little bit of dew. And sometimes it does rain when we're, when we're in bed. So when I do say it never rains here, it does rain early morning sometimes. You know, it's more of a heavy dew than a rain though. And so you can look back uh, next year to this week and find out what the weather was like in Tenerife. So I hope that you get value from that. COVID-19 update in a gale wind here now. <laughs> right, Tenerife, the numbers. Uh, last week we were way down. It was re reducing, reducing, reducing every week. And this week we've gone up. We've only gone up to 42. Now, we have 900,000 people on the island living here permanently. Uh, plus we get 6 million visitors a year, typically. So I think 42 is not bad, but it is on the rise. And um, we were looking around in, in Las Americas, in Veronica's especially, and a lot of places they're getting quite lax so there are people now who are coming over and really taking advantage of their holiday and dancing around and uh, not wearing masks lovey-dovey and kissing uh, we even had um, uh, some friends of ours you know that we know so they come up and they're all ready to kiss and we say you know let's just stay with the elbow for now and uh, so i think people are getting a little bit lax which is okay, you know, we don't want to be sticking the muds and pains in the bums, but um, there is a reason for not, not touching and washing your hands. So keep doing that, keep distancing, uh, wear your mask when you need to. And uh, a lot of people have been asking, when do you wear a mask? It's very simple. You wear a mask when you can't guarantee a one meter 50 distance from somebody you don't know. So that's pretty cool. So now to the big question, the 14-day quarantine. Uh, the UK have announced that the FCO have said no uh, non-essential travel to mainland Spain, but you can have non-essential travel to the Balearic Islands and the Canaries, which is obviously us, although we are still classed as Spain. So when they say any 
body returning from Spain needs to quarantine for 14 days, then they mean the Balearic Islands and the Canaries also. So you will be asked by the um, by the British government, the UK government, to quarantine, self-quarantine, for 14 days after you arrive back from Spain. Um, as Christina has uh, done a live today, so we were, we were live on Facebook. We've decided to go live on Facebook on Sunday afternoons, just spontaneous for those who are following us on the Facebook uh, page, Living with MS in Tenerife, and you can get to it by putting in at LWMST into Facebook. And so we're going to do that, but uh, we're also going to go live on YouTube on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. This is the plan at the moment. It might be too much, but we'll see. And I'm going to go to a different place Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays and uh, have a look around, have a drive around and film maybe, and then go into a bar or restaurant and have a coffee or a beer and uh, talk about the area a little bit. So that's, what, that's the plan for live. Christina's going to be with me on Fridays. Uh, maybe Mondays, we don't know. We'll see how it goes. So if you're not following us on YouTube, then pop over there right now. Go to youtube.com slash LWMST and subscribe to the channel. Ring the little bell for notifications and you'll be notified when we go live and when I upload other videos as well. So well, without further delay, I'm going to go whisk you back in time to last Tuesday, I think it was, where I interviewed Andrew Knight, the owner of... Uh, Sanasti car hire and also the wingman of the MacMaster who you probably also know as one of the big YouTubers that comes to Tenerife every month and shows us where the dollar pints is and the best fish and chips are and he does a great job he does a great job shout out to MacMaster <laughs> So I'm here today in Los Cristianos and I'm in an office surrounded by wonderful cars and I'm at Sanasti Car Hire and I'm talking to Andrew. Hi, yeah, you okay? I'm fine, thank you very much. You working hard? Hi, it's been busy at the moment. This week's been pretty busy. Cool. It's picked up. Well, the office here is quite cool actually and I can see you got your car straight outside and you got your other cars in uh, locked away somewhere. Yeah, just in the, the garages next door. We've got a few next to each other that we keep them all in but the most of them are out at the moment it's quite good oh well done well done so thank you for uh, the interview today i'm going to ask you a few questions you can answer them however you like you can give as much or as little information as you want the listeners are really interested in to know about you personally though okay 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 so my first question is and it's very general um how long have you been on the island how did you get here and what did you do before so i've been here for five years now um, before I came here, I was just doing bar work. I was a head barman and I'd got into uni and everything, but I couldn't decide on the course that I wanted to do. I was maybe thinking criminology. I got into Liverpool to do it, but I decided to take a gap year to think on it. Um, and in that gap year, I came here. Uh, my sister was already living here. She was already working um, at Silver Point at the time, which is now gone. Um, she was doing computer stuff there. So that was sort of my way in then. She was already here. Um, so me and my partner, we both came here at the same time and straight away got a job in Silver Point through my sister in the call center. So we did the call center. They helped us get all the NIE, everything all set up. My partner hated <laughs> the call center. Um, I was all right at it, I was quite good at it. Um, so I stuck it out for a year and a half. My partner lasted about two months. I've got a story about that as well, but I'm not gonna say it here, but just to suffice to say, my call center days lasted one and a half days. Yeah, yeah, I think you're either, you're either quite good at it and quite like it, or you hate it. I didn't like being stuck in an office all day, but it, it was all right money and it wasn't a bad job, so. I did that and then I was renting a car long term from Sanasti and the guy was about 65. He was sort of looking to retire. Um, so I was renting from him. 
my dad was coming over visiting he was renting from him and he happened to mention that it was for sale um long story short i ended up with it um and that's where i am now cool and how long have you had Sanasti? so it's been three and a half years now well done well done it seems like about a year they just mold all they all just molds into one that's because there's no seasons i think right? no no and it's it's pretty busy all year round really and the the winter in particular is just that mental the months just roll into one well what a lot of people don't know is that the canary islands high season is actually the winter so from around about October to May, is that right? May is the beginning of the low season? Yeah, I'd say mid-April. It drops off for us. And that's when all the swallows head back. And then we have April, May, June. And then it'll pick up again sort of mid-July when the kids break up and you've got the summer holidays then. The swallows, of course, are the people that come here for six months in the winter. And they're migrating south yeah. for the sun. <laughs> they get a, it's a nice life. Go home when the, as they always say, they go back when lawn when the lawn needs mowing. Okay, okay. Um, so you mentioned a partner. Do you want to give us more information on that, or is it sort of like you are keeping that a secret? No, that's what you've seen her on the vlogs, Laura. I mean, um, yeah, you've seen her on a few of the MacMaster vlogs. Um, she doesn't like the camera too much, so she stays away a bit. But she's so photogenic. I know. Well, I tell her, but she just likes to shy away a little bit, but. Yeah, so I've lived with her here for five years. Yeah, all good. Very well done. Very well done. Um, second question is, well, I'm actually going to do a different, I'm going to do a middle, mid-sized question because you brought him up, the Mac Master. When, when, did, when and how did you meet the Mac Master? I started, well, I'm always on YouTube, um, and I think I just started searching for Tenerife, things like that, see what was on YouTube with regards to Tenerife came across his channel, watched some of his videos, quite liked them. Um, and I thought, he's not really ventured that far from Las Americas, Los Chris. I thought I'll reach out to him, see if he wants a car. He can show a bit of the car on camera, show people what it's like to rent a car, because loads of people don't know what it's like, how easy it is. And he gets the car for the day, can go and explore, do a vlog. And I get a bit of promotion from it. People can see what car hire's like. So we did that. Um, I was quite nervous on that video. It was quite sort of, quite a commercial video um, in hindsight, but I enjoyed it. We carried on talking. We met for a beer afterwards. I then took him to a spot where he could fly his drone and then it just went from there really. Carried, kept in touch, got quite pally, did a few more videos and... So then you became his wingman. <laughs> his wingman, some say his lover, all the rest of it. <laughs> well, if I had a partner like Laura, I wouldn't be looking at the Mac Master, I'll tell you that. Okay, up to question number two, and it's a question I always ask. Um, apart from the obvious of lack of uh, customers during the COVID crisis, what's the main thing that you've had to change and what do you need to change going forward? Main thing we've changed really is the... The cars have always been clean, but it's the sanitization of them on the inside when they come back. Uh, there's a lot more sanitization goes on. It's a bit, lot more time sort of cleaning the insides. They're always very clean anyway, but they have to be, you know, alcohol. Um, can't use bleach on them, but we alcohol them, things like that. Um, the other thing is trying to keep people out of the office as much as we can so we're getting people to pay over the phone if they can so we, some of them we've not actually seen the clients they pick it up at the airport they pay over the phone and they drop it back at the airport there's no contact which is pretty good um, other than that not too much for us as an industry compared to restaurants and bars the protocol is and hotels enormous um, but for us we've been quite lucky in that sense that we can keep the distance, sanitize the cars, we've got more time to do it. Um, and just adapting to not having the staff on hand when it gets slightly busy, but it, but then it's not enough of a level to take them back fully. Um, so when do you think you're gonna be at that level? Hopefully August, I'm hoping August. As soon as I can, I want to. Um, I'm not just gonna keep it going till September. 
I want to try and get it back to that level, get the staff back in. Um, I've already got one back, um, but there's, there's two others, but it's not quite busy enough for that yet. Um, but hopefully, as soon as we can. So how's the government been um, helping you or your staff out financially? Staff-wise, they've been good. They've done the air turn, so they've been paying the staff. Um, for me, I haven't had much financial help, so to speak. They, they can give you, you can get a loan interest-free, but other than that, there's no furlough, things like that. Did they let you off for your social security or stuff, and you still got to pay all that? They've let me off for a few months of that. And do you think you're going to have to repay that, or is it just like a deferment, or do you think it's a, a, a gift? It's hard to say because they can change their mind and things change so quickly. At the moment, I don't think you've got to repay that. I don't think, but that could change. Um, if I need to, then I need to, but hopefully not. Because um, other than that, there's not really been that much financially. Not like in, compared to the UK where you can apply for the £10,000 grant if you've got premises, things like that. There's none of that here. Um, hopefully not, but we'll see. Okay. And um, basically, what are your future plans, either with the business or with you, or your personal life? Anything you, you are allowed to share? Um, I take each day as it comes, really. Hopefully try and expand the business a bit more. Um, we have grown it by about 50% since we took it over three and a half years ago. So we've got a lot more cars. Um, hopefully try and add more options and things. But it's, it's not as simple as get a load more cars with that. You've got to show that you've got the garage space for them. You've got to register with the government. There's a lot of protocol involved with it. It's not just buy a car, give it out. Um, you've got to have a certain amount of garage space to cover all those cars. But yeah, hopefully expand, maybe get another shop or another office somewhere. But at the moment, with the crisis going on, I've just got to keep ploughing on, stay steady and in a year or so's time, see where we are. So talking about the business, what is your, what is your typical rent? I mean, do you do like luxury cars? Is it mostly family cars? Is it small runabouts? What's, what's your, your main thing? Mostly small and family, so mostly your couples and your families who just want to go and explore the islands. Simple car, um, easy to park, things like that. We're not really into the, the luxury end. Um, we don't really do convertibles and things like that. Personally, I don't think there's that much of a demand for it. The demand is mostly for your cheaper stuff, your nice cheap panda, go and explore Tady, 35 euros for the day, you bring it back, job done. They don't, most don't want to go into all the fancy stuff. Um, so yeah, mostly the small stuff, family cars, um, got a few seven-seaters, stuff like that. So um, a lot of people, I notice online, they're asking things like, do I need a credit card? Can I pay cash? Is there a deposit? What about the waiver program and all, all, all the stuff that you, you typically assign with cars? What makes it easier to rent from you? Yeah. Um, we, you don't need a credit card. You can pay by debit card or even cash. Um, so you don't need a credit card. You can, can pay credit card if you want to. Um, we've got the full insurance is included. The taxes are included, everything like that. A lot of the companies will add the Idjicon at the end or they'll try and sell you a big package for the insurance, things like that. Um, in the contract, there is a small excess of 250 euros. That's if you were in an accident that was your fault as the renter. So say you hit someone or things like that, then you'd have a responsibility to pay the 250 euros, which is nothing compared to the thousand euro deposits up at the airport. Right. Um, we never normally have any issues, which you'll see from the reviews. We're not out to try and, you know, there's a little scratch there. We're not into all that. Um, it's just if you have an accident, it covers the first. 250 euros so yeah you can organize pick up and drop off at the airport so you can pick the car up there drop it off again or you can do here in the office in Los Chris or you can also have it delivered to the hotel and picked up from the hotel which is a popular one because a lot of people they just want three two or three days and um, go and explore the island and finish so a lot of it is hotel delivery and pick up 
So coming up to the airport, obviously you're going to be able to, you're going to have to not drink on the flight and stuff like that, you know. And so, so, yeah, so basically it's easy to just get a taxi to your hotel, chill out and then get your car when you're ready because you don't want to pay for your car and then leave it in the garage the next morning. No, okay. no. So you can do that or a lot of people, they, if they're not interested in drinking on the plane, which a lot don't, um, they like to pick it up at the airport to save on the taxis. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, because of course you're paying 20 odd euros, 20 odd euros each, way. each way for a taxi, yeah. Okay. Uh, can you... Um, you get it delivered to your hotel or your apartment, and uh, can you then drop it back off at the airport? Is, is, is it? You can do, yeah, you can do it that way. You can pick it up at the airport and drop it back at the office, or you can pick it up at the office, so you're drop pretty it at the flexible, airport. Really. Pretty flexible, yeah, as long as it's arranged and we know in advance. Uh -huh. yeah. And none of these little, there's a little scratch there, you owe me $5 million. No, 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 no. That's, no. that's one of the good things. We know Tenerife, we know what it's like. They will just <laughs> open the door into your car. It's normal, so. None of that silly business. Uh, one thing I was going to ask, uh, when you mentioned about insurance there and it's your own fault, because it's a party island, people like to have a drink. Yeah. And the drinking and driving laws here are pretty strict. Yeah. Is your insurance totally void if you have an accident which is not your fault, but you've had a drink? Yeah. I, um, I imagine it would be. I'd need... I'd, Thankfully, I've never had that situation, but if, so say it again, if they, if they, if they have an accident and they're over the limit, even though yeah. they, even though they didn't cause it, the accident, but they're during the, um, the police investigation, if you like, yeah. they found out that the, one of the drivers or the driver is over the limit. Then how does the insurance work then? Is it totally void or do they just have to pay the 250 euros excess? Yeah, I think it would be void then. So be void. Right. You're going to be arrested as well. So message to everybody. It's Tenerife. Have a great time, but stay safe. If you're hiring a car or you're driving in your own car or any vehicle, please drive and drink responsibly. In fact, don't drive and drink. <laughs> it's, they're cheap taxis. You're never really that far from out from your hotel. Just get a taxi back if you have too many. Okay. It's really not worth it unless you want to spend the night locked up in a Spanish cell, which is not going to be pleasant. I don't imagine so. No. So, uh, yeah, stay safe. Right, on that note, I'm going to ask you if you want to shout out to anybody. Um, I'll shout out, shout out to the Mac Master. <laughs> uh, if you haven't checked out his channel, it's Mac Master. Uh, he's got loads of videos coming up, including one with you, Tim, me. It's, uh, he's got loads of good videos, and I think he's coming back in August, cool. I think. So there'll be plenty more, I imagine. So this uh, is going out on Sunday, The whatever the date is on Sunday. What's the date on Sunday? Sunday I will check, is the 26th. The 26th are actually Monday morning, because I usually cut it on Sunday night, uh, together with my podcast. And don't forget, you can get the podcast all over the place on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And all you got to do is to ask Alexa to play the Aftcast Tenerife Afternoons podcast. And she'll tell you, you have to turn off the profanity filter for me to be able to do that. I don't know why, because we don't bloody swear, do we? <laughs> so without... Uh, you need anything else you want to tell us? No, just thanks very much for coming down and having a chat. Okay, great. Good to see you. Um, I'll be listening in to myself on Monday. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's it really. Thanks very much for coming down and I enjoy the channel. Andrew Knight, the Knight Strider, maybe. The sidekick of the Mad Master, the new friend of Timothy Dowd and the Aftcast Afternoons podcast. Thank you very, very much. And until the next time, goodbye. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you. Bye-bye. Vamos a la playa. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That was uh, Andrew Knight from Sanity Car Hire. And if you're looking for a car, go to him because he's a no-nonsense, no-mess person. Uh, you go in, you organize everything over the phone, you get your car delivered to where you need it to be, uh, when you need it. And as he said, there's no sort of like little scratches and, oh, you, you've dinked it or you didn't fill the, the tank up to, right up to the full thing. So he's a very flexible guy and uh, give him some support. So, until next week, I'd like to thank you and tell you that our contact details are, as always, 
you go to www.timothydowd.com and you can go to the contact page and send us an email. You can uh, uh, leave a comment on one of the videos on Facebook or YouTube, or you could write a comment on my blog as well. And don't forget our sponsors. Our sponsors are the most important people that we know because it allows us to do what we do. And we'd like to thank each and every one of you for sponsoring. And also on YouTube for putting up with a couple of little adverts at the beginning and the end. And sometimes in the middle so that YouTube can, uh, can pay us as well. But if you want to give us a buy us a coffee or a beer, then just go to www.timothydown.com and press the sponsor button. So until next week, this is Tim for Living With MS in Tenerife and AFCAST Tenerife Afternoons signing off. Goodbye.